Hi boys and girls. You know, as we're talking about ways to take care of the earth, one of the most important questions that I find is, where does the garbage go? Now you guys put trash in a trash can every single day. What happens then? I'm sure some of you know that you take that trash out of the trash can, you pull the bag out, and then you put it into a can maybe that goes out to the road and gets picked up by the trash man, right? But what happens after that? Where does the garbage go? In our school, we are learning about garbage. Last week, our teacher told us about the way things used to be. Garbage comes from leftovers. Garbage comes from my baby brother. Do we have to study this before lunch? She said there was a time when people who wanted to get rid of something just threw it into the garbage can. They threw in garbage like orange pills, chicken bones, the food they didn't eat. They threw in trash too. Empty bottles, tin cans, cardboard boxes, old newspapers, I would have eaten that. When you put garbage and trash together, you call it waste. So she's talking about trash as in empty bottles and boxes and garbage as in food scraps. Once a week, the waste was collected in trunk, trucks and taken out to the dump. In the dump, there were piles of garbage everywhere and all kinds of trash. Old tires, broken bottles, tin cans, old newspapers, broken chairs and sofas. In summer, the garbage rotted and made a terrible stink. Rats came to eat it. Millions of flies buzzed around. The dump was a great big mess. Today, some towns still have dumps where they leave their garbage and trash. A lot of towns do. At one time, New York City used the ocean for its dump. It loaded its waste on flat boats called barges. Tugboats pulled the barges out to sea and the waste was dumped overboard. Most of the trash sank, but some of it floated. Ugh. Often it floated right back to the beaches where people were swimming. Ugh, yuck. New York City doesn't throw its waste in the ocean anymore. It has a special kind of dump called a landfill. Other cities have landfills too. Our town has one and our class went out and looked at it. A landfill is a busy place. Not a great place for a picnic. Phew, it smells. Trucks bring loads of waste from the city and dump it in big piles. Bulldozers with scrapers spread out the waste. Compactors with spikes on their wheels move back and forth over it. The waste is all mashed and piled. After that, trucks bring loads of soil. The bulldozers and compactors spread the soil over the waste. The soil covers up everything. It keeps out the rats and flies. Then the landfill is ready for more waste. Then comes more soil to cover it up. Then more waste and more soil layer after layer. A landfill keeps piling up. It gets to be a little mountain. The layers of a landfill. So here's, here's what the layers look like. So each of those squares is like one day's worth of trash and they've covered it. And then you've got the dirt cap for layer one and the dirt cap for layer two and they're working on layer three. And they become these big hills. 
When the last layer of soil is spread on top of a landfill, grass and trees are planted on it. The landfill becomes a park or a playground. Then the city has to start a new landfill. Waste never stops piling up. What is in our landfill? So here you have a pie graph. And it says that 50% or half of the landfill is paper. 10%, this little triangle, is plastic. 20% is other stuff. 13% is food and yard waste. 1% is glass and 6% is metal. So most of what we throw away is paper. And then the second most is other stuff. But third is food and yard waste like grass clippings. Some cities try to get rid of their waste by burning it. They build big furnaces called incinerators and burn garbage and trash in them. The heat is used to warm stores and offices. It is also used to make electricity. But incinerators don't really get rid of everything. They simply turn the waste into ashes and the ashes have to go to a landfill. Sometimes those ashes are toxic or harmful. And sometimes the smoke from the incinerator pollutes the air with harmful gases. How an incinerator works. Trucks bring garbage. Garbage is fed into a furnace and the furnace burns garbage in about a half an hour. And then the gases from the burning garbage are cleaned and filtered and then they're released into the air. Today, cities are having a hard time finding places for new landfills. Waste keeps piling up. People keep throwing things away. They throw away too many things. Some of the things they throw away could be used over again. Each person in the U.S. creates about four pounds of trash every day. That's a lot. Many cities are now trying something that is new for them. It's called recycling. Recycling means making trash into something new instead of throwing it away. Almost half of the trash we throw away could be recycled. Look for this symbol on glass, metal, and plastic containers that can be recycled. So here's the recycle symbol. And we do, everybody makes four pounds of trash a day. Our city is recycling. We still put garbage in the garbage can. Orange pills, chicken bones, the food we don't eat. But we keep empty glass bottles in a separate box. Aluminum cans and foil are kept separate too. When we put the cans and bottles at the curb, we pile old newspapers beside them. We flatten our cardboard boxes and pile them next to the newspapers. When the garbage truck comes, it picks up only the garbage and takes it out to the landfill. Other trucks come for the bottles and cans and newspapers. Those things don't go to the landfill anymore. Our city sells them to factories and mills for recycling. Paper mills chop up old newspapers and turn them into new paper. The paper is shredded into pulp and then the pulp is washed and bleached and then the water is drained from the pulp and then the paper is dried and rolled. Aluminum factories take aluminum cans and foil and they melt them to make new cans and rolls of foil. So here the cans are chopped up and then the decoder is a machine that takes off the paint from the metal scraps with hot air. So if you have a can that has like a name of a drink on it, they blow hot air at it and that makes the um, paint come off. And then the scraps are melted in a furnace and then the aluminum is poured into a mold and what it makes is like a sheet of metal when it cools down. Glass bottles are ground up and melted to make new glass bottles and jars. 
So some bottles are sterilized and reused. Sometimes you have a glass bottle, you clean it and then you use it again. But other glass bottles are crushed and then it melts in a furnace and then the glass are poured in, it's poured into a mold and then they blow in cool air and it hardens and you have a new bottle. Even plastic can be recycled. Plastic factories chop it up and turn it into things like flower pots and park benches. So plastic is chopped into bits and then they're washed and dried and then it's melted and also it's poured into a mold to give it its shape. So basically when they recycle, they usually take the, the item and they chop it up small and melt it and then pour it into a new mold. So what are we doing to help the environment? We're separating our trash and recycling. We put our food scraps in the compost heap. Some of our food from vegetables doesn't have to go in the trash. You can make a compost heap. That's where you make a pile and you put leaves and grass clippings and old food scraps like apple cores and banana pills and you turn it and the worms will go in and eat it and make it into good soil for your garden. I made a toy for my dog out of old socks instead of throwing the socks in the trash or buying the dog a new toy. My family gives all our old clothes to the thrift store. Instead of throwing them away, they take them to a secondhand store. I carry a lunch box instead of a bag I'd throw away. My mom started a recycling program for paper at work. Let's start one here. We carry bags to the store so we don't need to take the plastic ones we'd only throw away. Our teacher says recycling is a good start, but we must do more. We must stop making so much waste. We must stop throwing so many things away. We need to find ways to use things over and over again. That's what we have done at home. We used to bring our groceries home in paper and plastic bags. Then we emptied the bags. We threw them in the garbage can. When we did that, we were just making more waste to pile up in the landfill. We have stopped doing that. Now we use bags that we, string bags. They hang on the kitchen doorknob. When we go to the supermarket, we take our bags and put our groceries in them. Some people keep them in their car. We never throw away our bags. They are strong and hold a lot of groceries and we use them over and over again. Boys and girls, I have a challenge for you today. They say that every person creates four pounds of trash. How much trash do you make in one day? My challenge is to get yourself something to hold your trash in. It can be a tiny little trash can that you've already emptied, or you can use a bag. But if you open something up for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or you get a new toy or anything at all where you have trash, I want you to put your trash into that container or bag. I'd like you to watch and see how much trash you make in a whole day. It's really good for us to know. When we take a look at how much trash we make, we can help come up with different ways that we can make less trash. So would you do that today? That's my challenge for you. Bye.